Welcome everyone to the latest Coffee Break webinar by RIB Costex. My name is Francesca Nottingham and I'm a Costex consultant in RIB software. As you can see on screen, this month's topic is user columns. So we'll have a look at how you would use this functionality in the software. For those of you who don't know what Costex is or for those who have never used it, Costex is a fully integrated measuring and estimating solution with universal applications, supporting everything from hand-drawn sketches to PDFs DWGs all the way through to 3D models, BIM files, and everything in between. As we can see from this matrix, RIB Costex is available in a variety of licenses, ranging from offering all functionality to a fairly limited option, depending on your estimating requirements. Delving deeper into each functionality, let's look at the components, breaking down how each of them are cohesive with one another, bringing you an all-in-one service. You have your takeoff options to start with, whether you're using 3D or BIM or 2D drawings, Costex provides accurate data enabling you to utilise this data within your workbook. So our workbooks are much like Excel spreadsheets, but they are our own version. They still have the ability to use formulas and functions, making them very easy to navigate and use. We then have revisions tracking. Now this offers an accurate method of comparing a previous revision with a new one, giving you multiple ways to highlight, identify and quantify any changes, meaning you're always up to date with the latest cost implications. Once you've completed your estimate, you then have the opportunity to produce a report. Now we offer various standard report templates for you to use. Alternatively, you can customise your own report, producing a professional quality output. Don't forget to check out our RIB Costex YouTube channel where we upload our Coffee Break webinars and you can also subscribe so you get notified for latest videos and kept up to date with the newest features and how-to videos. So this month's webinar, as previously mentioned, we will be reviewing the functionality of user columns used in workbooks within Costex. Firstly, let's discuss what these are. So each new workbook added comes with a number of columns. The first eight columns are allocated to certain items such as code, description, quantity, unit, rate, etc. Beyond the first eight, there is an infinite amount of user columns which can be used for anything that you may need. When can we use them? So you can use them at any point, whether it be for numerical or text data, there are no limitations to how they can be used. You can also customize the column headers to read whatever relevant heading you need, depending on the data that you enter. How can they be used? So you can enter text into them, for example, if you need a comments or a notes section. You can also use Excel-like formulas if you need to do some calculations outside of the usual standard ones. You can also use Costex own functions in them for specific data or totals. So a couple of things to note. So these are specific to the workbook in the building that you're working on. So what I mean by that is once you customise your user columns in the workbook in that specific building, it will only be applied to that workbook. If you add a new workbook, the user columns will default back to the standard setting of not having your customised headings, even if you add a new workbook into the same building. You can set up a workbook with your customised user columns as a template and bring this in each time so you don't have to redo your column headings or formulas, etc. As mentioned before, there are an infinite amount of columns to use, so there are no limitations. There are also no limitations to what you can use them for, so it's bespoke to you and how you work. Hopefully we answer any questions you have in this webinar, but if you have any further questions and there is more information on this in the Costex help guide, this can be accessed by hitting the question mark button in the top right corner of the application. Alternatively, you can press F1 on your keyboard and just search for user columns. So let's take a look at the functionality of user columns in workbooks. So with columns of a workbook, what we're going to have a look at first is what you get straight out of the box when you add in a new workbook. So um, I'm in my building, I'm in my workbook view, and I can go to my workbooks tab. I'm then gonna select my add button. It's going to allow me to open up a new workbook. So we're literally just gonna call this one blank workbook, and then insert. And as you can see, um, these first columns, we've got A to H there, which are already named. So we've got code, description, quantity, unit, rate, subtotal, factor and total. We've then got column I onwards. Now these are what we refer to as user columns. So there's an infinite amount of these, um, very similar to an Excel spreadsheet. So you can just carry on going. Doesn't matter how many columns you need, uh, you can use them. So they start with user one, um, 
all the way up to an infinite amount. They've obviously got the reference of um, their letters as well. So you've got I, J, K, etc. Um, and you can literally just populate this with any information you need. Now, it does always help if you name your user columns. So let's go to an example we've got here. So I've got uh, just a superstructure centric uh, workbook here um, where I've populated uh, the first few columns. So I've got my codes, I've got my description, quantities, unit, rate, subtotal and total. Now, what I want to do is actually name these columns and use them for specific things. So all I need to do in order to do that is go to my workbook properties. So you can do that a number of ways. You could um, right click on your workbook and select edit workbook properties. Uh, alternatively, there is the properties button up here in your menu. So let's just select this. This takes us back to the uh, window that we had when we were first inserting the workbook. So when we created our workbook here, um, this is the same window. But what we're actually going to do is focus on this tab here, so column names. So as you can see, it's got a list here of all the different user columns you can use. Um, so user one starting here, I'm going to just simply click in this field and rename this uh, comments. So this is where I can just type in any information um, that I need to, which is a comment next to that item. Um, and this will change it for the entire workbook. So it's going to change it on each level that I go down onto. User two is where we're going to put some stage two information in. So I'm simply just gonna call this one stage two costs. Column K is going to be stage three costs. And stage four is going to be the variance. So this will be information um, that's calculated from these two columns. So I'm going to show you different scenarios of how you can use user columns uh, for different things. So if I update this, as you can see, my columns have now changed. The headers are now called the items that I chose. So comment stage two costs, stage three costs and variance. Um, and I've obviously still got the extras here that I want to use if necessary. So in comments, um, this can be anything you need it to be. So let's just say, for example, that your um, internal doors, perhaps the specifications not been decided or maybe there's just something in abeyance, then um, this might be a provisional sum as a result of that. So in this case, you can actually just type in um, provisional sum. Okay, so it can be hard typed information. You can copy and paste information into here. It can be anything you want. It kind of works the same way um, in Excel as what notes would be. We do also have notes, um, but it's just quite a nice sort of visual to use that column for comments. What you can also do is use the information for your stage two and stage three costs. So what I mean by this, is if we go down a level, so let's just double click on frame here. So as you can see, my headers have remained. So on any level, this is what the headers are going to be. So again, you can enter in comments here, but what we're gonna do is enter in our stage two costs. So let's just basically copy and paste uh, the information. Let's just say this is our stage two costs. Okay, and then what we're going to do is simulate some stage three costs. So let's just say that we have um, had an increase of 15%. So in that case, what we can do is um, enter in a formula. So up here in my formula bar, I'm going to select uh, equals and then this item times 1.15. And then what I can do is just pull this down and duplicate this information by pressing Control D. Uh, and then what I've done there is basically pasted the information. So all of these are relevant to stage two. So I've got my stage two costs, I've got my stage three costs. And then what I can do is create uh, a formula in my variance column. So I'm going to, again, put a formula in here. So equals stage three minus Stage two, 
And then once again, I'm just going to duplicate that information using Control D. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is do this for every section. So I'm going to go down to upper floors and basically do the same thing. I'll rush through this part so you don't have to listen to me do it slowly, but I'll rush through it um, and then show you how to get a total of that on level one. Okay, so once you've done all of your calculations in the levels below, what you can do is use these columns um, with a custom function, so a costx workbook custom function, which will allow you to grab the totals from these columns underneath. So all you need to do is um, go to the correct column. So let's say I want the total of all of the stage two information under here. So I need all of this information, for example. So all I need to do is just select in this cell and then what I need to do is just press the function button and this is the item I want, so x sum user. So you can actually select the column in here but because we've already done that it's automatically placed that there. You can also set any rounding um, or any decimal places displayed that you need in this section and then you literally just press update and as you can see that's now captured all the information um, from below. So what we can do is just pull this down, press Control D, and now that's completed the scenario. So what we can also do is the same thing on the stage three. So I'm once again going to press my function button, make sure X sum user is selected, and make sure the correct column is placed. Um, again, you can do your decimal places if you want to, uh, and then press update. And as you can see, that's captured the information from underneath. So I'm once again just going to use Control D to duplicate that formula. Um, and we can go down and check. So that's 879811. So let's go down and double check what that is. So 879811. Okay, so once again, we can do the same thing for the variance column. So function, XM user, update, pull the information down and it's now gathered the totals for me. So it doesn't have to be the item that's in the same column directly underneath. So perhaps you might have some different columns underneath in user seven, for example, but you want the total information to be in user or the J column in user two. Um, so in your selection of the function, then you would just select which one you wanted. So in that case, user seven. So it doesn't always have to be the item that's directly underneath it, it can be from another column. So in an example, if you were using or if you wanted to generate a report from this, um, a lot of our standard reports will only sort of capture this information, but if you wanted to include this information, you can. So all you'd need to do is just go to reports uh, and then insert a new one. So this example, you might call it superstructure stage two to three. Uh, give it a title, I'm literally just going to call it the same thing there. Stick it in a folder. Okay, and then you tell it how many levels you want to go down to. So I've only gone down two levels, so I'm just going to say level one and level two is fine. Uh, you've got some filtering options down here, but I'm going to leave those um, as standard and then go to next. So now what we can do is actually select the columns that we want to include. So let's just take this one back and then let's have a look. So we've got a list here of all of the available columns um, and we just select which ones we want and then they appear in here and that is how our report is going to be generated. So if I want my um, code description quantity unit rate 
and total included. So I can actually use my control key to multi-select there. Um, and then what I can do is find the user column. So I've used uh, user one, so I could have my comments displayed. I've used user two, so that's my stage two costs, stage three, etc. So let's say um, I want stage or user two, so stage two shown uh, as well as stage three. And I also want my variant shown, so user four as well. Okay, so these are all the columns that are going to be included. Again, you've got some filtering options down here. Um, you've then got other tabs up here which you can use to change um, any logos if you want to, any column widths, um, any footers. All that information can be adjusted how you need. Um, but for now, we'll leave those blank. So let's just preview what that looks like. Okay, so as you can see, we've got our items here. So in the frame section, we've got our items. Then got our quantity, our unit of measure, our total, and then we've now got the stage two, stage three, and the variance costs. So it doesn't matter um, what you use your user columns for, it can be for anything, and you can display it in a report. You just have to make sure that that's selected at the time you've created your report. Something to note is if you have used quite a few user columns, you might want to change the page layout to be um, a different orientation so you just have to go to let's say a4 size and here you can change it to landscape so if you've got quite a few user columns it's probably worth choosing landscape to make sure it all fits on the page um, but all of these details are, are down to you there's no sort of written rule you can just um, play with it as you need to so that is user columns you can use them however you want to you can use our custom functions in them you can hard type into them um, it can be for any information you need it to be to make your estimate or your uh, report how you want it to look. Um, and you can also use just general um, Excel formulas as well. That also works. So hopefully you found this useful. Have a go at customising your user columns. You literally, again, just go into your properties of your workbook and name them whatever you want to name them. Just remember that that's going to be the name on each of the levels. Um, and anytime you go down to another level it will have the same one so just worth noting um but thanks for listening and please subscribe to our channel for the latest how-to videos and give this video a like if you found it useful